Welcome to Focus on Faith, the program that brings you portraits of faith from across the nation. Join us as we bring you the faith of men and women from all walks of life who truly represent the spirit of America as we focus on faith. Greetings, welcome to Focus on Faith. I'm Cindy Anderson, bringing you a worldwide fellowship of Christians in action. Ron Ellis is a Canadian former professional ice hockey player, playing 16 seasons in the National Hockey League for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Ellis was a member of the 1967 Stanley Cup winning team and took part in the famed 1972 Summit Series against the Russian national team. Ellis retired at age 30 during training camp in 1975, coming off the most productive season of his career with 61 points. He said he no longer had the desire to play hockey. While in 1977, Ellis came out of retirement to play for Canada at the World Hockey Championships and then decided to resume his NHL career with the Maple Leafs in 1977 and 1978. He had played 1,034 career NHL games, scoring 332 goals and 308 assists for 640 points. Well, the stresses of life after hockey took its toll in 1986, and Ellis suffered with a bout of clinical depression. Well, along the way, his wife Jan and his strong Christian beliefs were fundamental in his emergence from the dark clouds of depression. He would later go public with his story by writing the book titled Over the Boards, The Ron Ellis Story, which was published in 2002. And today, he is a speaker on the importance of diagnosing and treating clinical depression. In 1993, Ellis joined the Hockey Hall of Fame as a director of public affairs and assistant to the president. On October 17, 2016, Ellis was part of a healthy class inducted into the Ontario Sports Hall of Fame. Well, since our visit, literally multitudes of people, young and old, have seen this timeless testimony through public service programming and cable networks. And now it is available through Telemissions International's new Life's Lighthouse series of programs. We hope you enjoy this video. And if you like the series, then please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And please share the video, and if you want to check out the entire series of Focus on Faith, then just click the link below. And thank you for watching. Focus on Faith. Today, Focus on Faith 
comes to Greenwich, Connecticut, to the beautiful Dorothy Hamill Ice Arena. And here before our camera today is a noted professional hockey player, none other than Ron Ellis of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Welcome to Focus on Faith, Ron. Doctor, it's a great pleasure to be here with you, and I uh, hope we enjoy our little talk. I know we will. How many years have you played professional hockey, Ron Ellis? I'm uh, involved in, right now in my 14th year as a professional player. And I know you've had the privilege of playing for a Stanley Cup winning team, the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? That's very, that's very correct. Uh, I've been extremely fortunate in my career. Uh, a lot of players play for many, many years, and they don't have a chance to play on a winner. But I've played on a Stanley Cup winner. I've played on a Memorial Cup winner, which is emblematic of the top junior team in Canada. And I've had uh, two opportunities to play for Team Canada, represent my country uh, playing in international hockey. So I've, I've been very fortunate indeed. No doubt, Ron Ellis, you've made your mark on the ice of American Canada coast to coast. And we're just so thrilled to have you on Focus on Faith today. Here's a question a little academic, Ron. Uh, the idea of sportsmanship and such physical contact and violence, unfortunately, as often is demonstrated on the ice. Uh, what's your rationale on that? Well, I am certainly not a, what you would call a big man, and uh, I've had to make the pro ranks as a skater, as a two-way hockey player. And as a result, uh, I'm not what you would call a rough player by any means. I don't get very many penalties. It's just a style of hockey that I've developed right from when I was about 13 or 14 years old. Um, the way I look at it, uh, I like to give my best. I think I have a reputation of working hard uh, amongst the league, among, amongst other, other players in the league, and they know that I, I won't hold back from going into the corners to try and get the puck out of the corner. But I try to play uh, according to the rules as much as possible. In other words, it's attitude, isn't it? Not to play mean, but to play hard. Well, that's exactly the way I've looked at it. Uh, I like to be known as a player who gives 100%, but also who, a player who uh, plays the game the way it should be played. Uh, Ron, in brief, the name is Focus on Faith. Could we have a focus on your faith? Well, Doctor, I'm not uh, used to trying to put these things in a few sentences, but I'll do my best for you. I at a very young age, made a decision to try and become a professional hockey player. I think the main reason I did so was because it, it looked like a short road to success. Uh, you look at the pro players, they're making a lot of money and they surround themselves with a lot of material things. And uh, I felt, well, heck, this is, this is for me. I had a chance to go to school on a scholarship here in the States and play hockey, but really, when I look back at it, I think I'm, I took the shortcut because of the, the success I thought I'd achieve much quicker. After playing professional hockey for three or four years, uh, things started to go a little wrong for me. Uh, I was wondering, beginning to wonder where all this happiness and peace of mind and everything that I, I sort of hoped for was. It just, seemed to, just didn't seem to be developing the way I expected. Uh, I also found myself becoming very much a warrior. I was very much concerned uh, about the future. I was very in insecure in, in a lot of my ways. Uh, for example, if I went a few games without a goal or something, I was very much concerned about what happens if I don't, don't score the next game and what happens if I get hurt tomorrow and won't be able to play and all these things started to build up in my mind. Uh, something else that I, when I look back, that I wasn't very proud of, I, I uh, became a a very selfish person. I was mainly concerned with, with myself and, and the game and uh, really didn't have much time for my family's problems. Uh, for example, I have two brothers and two sisters and if they were having some problems, uh, maybe superficially I was maybe uh, nice to them and say that's too bad, but really down deep I, I really wasn't involved like I wanted to be. I was too much concerned about myself. So I didn't like the way things were going, and I didn't like Ron Ellis at the time. And I came in contact with a gentleman by the name of Mel Stevens, who is a director of a Christian ranch in, in Toronto. And uh, he invited me to a, a retreat weekend at this ranch for athletes and their wives. Both my wife and I went along. Uh, we weren't really 
all for it. Well, we thought, well, we'll go along. Some of our friends are there. Maybe we could enjoy it. And uh, we had a beautiful weekend with these people. And the one thing I realized that these athletes were just like myself. They had the same pressures, same temptations that I was going through, but they were coping with their careers very, very nicely. And it didn't take me long to realize it's because they had a relationship with the Lord. They had a relationship with, with Jesus Christ. And that's what came out of that weekend. And about a week after that, both my wife and I made decisions for the Lord. And that was approximately five years ago. Uh, Ron, as we follow that thought, what about the Bible in your home? The Bible in my home is important. Uh, we meet with other couples uh, once every other Thursday at home and it's a tremendous share, sharing time that we have and we get into the word we try and learn more about the word and how it affects our lives and so I can certainly say it's been very important in our life. How important that is the family praying together and staying together right Ron? Yes we even do that my, I have uh, two very young children my little girl she's nine years old and my boy's five and uh, we have them both seeing Grace at the table now, and they look forward to it. They, they almost sort of uh, have a little uh, confrontation deciding who's going to say Grace, if you know <laughs> what I mean. And it doesn't, that's not what the Lord wants, but that's how uh, enthused they are, and right. uh, it makes me feel very, very good. Well, Ron Ellis, out of the entire book, is there any portion of Scripture that's special to you? I can remember uh, I came across a verse in Proverbs, Proverbs 3, five and six it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and all your ways acknowledge him do not rely on your own insights and, and he will make straight your path well Ron Ellis there's no doubt your life is a great influence to many young people in hockey camps and speaking at youth gatherings such as you're about to do here at this beautiful ice rink in memory and tribute to our great Dorothy Hamill uh, we're going to see you in action as you address all of these lovely young people from this greater metropolitan area. And I understand, Ron, you have put into writing the Ron Ellis story, right? Yes, I guess we could call it the Ron Ellis story. It's uh, sort of a, a short form of what, what I've been through uh, in, in my career, sort of the ups and downs of a professional hockey career up to the point where I made a decision for the Lord and uh, what has happened in the last last five years. Well, it has a handsome picture of Ron Ellis, and we're going to see that this is made available to all of you on our television and radio listening end, so you stay tuned to be sure how you can get your free copy of the great story of Ron Ellis, this noted professional hockey player with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Ron, we're going to wrap it up. But I just want to say most sincerely our thanks to you for your partaking with us in the great work of Televisions International and the Focus on Faith broadcast and telecast here today. Dr. Anderson, uh, I'm certainly very pleased to be here today and very pleased to be part of this, this program. And I know all the athletes that you have talked to uh, feel the same way. We realize the tremendous work that you do in the field, and I know you have helped a lot of lives and uh, so we're behind you 100 percent and uh, I just hopefully uh, would ask some people that are maybe li li listening to us right now uh, just might consider trying to, to support what you're doing because I do believe it is a tremendous thing. Well thank you Ron Ellis. Thank you for joining us today with our sincere hope that you have been blessed and encouraged with this focus on faith timeless testimony. Now, friend, if you want to see more of these unique videos, then don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe in order to never again miss any of the upcoming timeless testimonies. By you simply caring and sharing this unique series of programs, that will greatly help our channel to reach many more people with these personal testimonies. Now, in closing, Today's timeless testimony may have impacted someone out there and God is speaking to you right now and that person wants to commit their life to follow Christ. Friend, I would encourage you to start by reading your Bible and to begin to practice what the Bible says. And I pray that you will get strong in the desire to go out and find a good Bible teaching church to join and to not let yourself get distracted, but rather you will make this a priority in your life 
to seek God's will for a new life in Christ. Now, if you want to know more about having a more abundant and fulfilling life, then this booklet, Beginning with Christ by Navigators International, is a great way to get started, and I want to send this to you absolutely free. If you'll just call 1-800-28-FAITH, that's right, just call 1-800-28-FAITH, and I will be happy to send this to you free. Just leave your name and address and I will mail it out directly. Or if you prefer, you can simply email us at info at and request this free booklet there. And if you have a specific prayer request, let us know. We will include your request in our daily prayer time. For those of you who would like to know more about Telemissions International and how this unique ministry got started, just visit our website telemissions.org and learn the story of how these many timeless testimonies were recorded in the early 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s and will live on for decades to come. Also, you can purchase a copy of Born to Preach. By the late Dr. Gordon Anderson Sr., this book tells the riveting life story of my father's faith travels, triumphs, and action-packed stories with Alaska wildlife photography and exciting adventures, including on-location interviews with doctors, senators, astronauts, and much, much more. Spanning over his 70-year ministry, this book will captivate and sway the hearts of young and old readers alike. Available on our website, telemissions.org. Check it out. And please don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment on our website and tell your friends about this new and exciting series of programs. We all know the power of a personal testimony and this and many more classic testimonies like this will continue to spread the light, helping others around the world through God's lighthouse. Now, this picture you see of the lighthouse on the stormy shores of the Outer Banks is our hallmark signifying the importance of Telemissions International reaching out to multitudes for Christ. Just think of it, friend, every timeless testimony that is being broadcast is like a beacon of light beaming out the good news on the stormy shores of cyberspace for decades to come. Well, thanks again for joining us today. This is Dr. Gordon Anderson, Jr. sharing with you our prayer promise, which is Psalm 121, verse 2. And it says, My help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And friend, remember to start every day in prayer. Now God's richest blessings as you focus your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now one thing I realize that these athletes were just like myself. They had the same pressures same temptations that I was going through, but they were coping with their careers very, very nicely. And it didn't take me long to realize it's because they had a relationship with the Lord. They had a relationship with, with Jesus Christ. And that's what came out of that weekend. And about a week after that, both my wife and I made decisions for the Lord. And that was approximately five years ago.